This episode is brought to you by Experian. Are you paying for subscriptions you don't use, but can't find the time or energy to cancel them? Experian could cancel unwanted subscriptions for you, saving you an average of $270 per year and plenty of time. Download the Experian app. Results will vary. Not all subscriptions are eligible. Savings are not guaranteed. Paid membership with connected payment account required. Today on an all-new Dr. Phil. Three of the biggest mistakes you don't know you're making. Destroying your marriage. Do you have an anger problem? I sure do. Sabotaging your children. Come here. The chaos that you're creating can lower their IQ, can lower their self-esteem. But you won't believe. So what do you suppose it is that you don't know? the biggest error of them all. You two are in violation of every single one of them. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. I know things are tough out there, but we can do this. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. 10 seconds to air. We love you. Well, thank you. This is going to be a changing day yeah. in your life. Ready, camera five. Three. Take track. Go, Dr. Phil. Yeah. Let's do it. And this is a big question. How many mistakes, big or small, do you think you make a day, a week, or even a month? <laughs> it could be hundreds when you're thinking about the small ones like turning down the wrong street or dialing the wrong number. But it's the big ones that you have to worry about. You know the ones, like if you call your wife a name because you were mad, or how you handle finding a few marijuana seeds in your kid's pocket. Now, you know it's wrong at the time, but what you don't know is how wrong your response can be as time goes by. So if you're making these kind of big mistakes that have effects that you aren't even aware of, wouldn't you want to know it? Well, today I'm talking about three of the biggest mistakes you don't know you're making. And when I say you don't know, I mean that you may not be aware of the negative results these mistakes can have way down the road. Now, Orlando and Sarah are a good example of what is happening in many households today. They fight and they argue, but no big deal. But there's a right way and a wrong way to do it, and they never resolve anything, That's, which is not uncommon. 69% of disputes among married couples never get resolved. Take a look at this first before I talk about the big mistake they're making. I'm tired of fighting. I'm tired of fighting every day. Obviously, you want to be right. No, you I don't want to be right. right. I, I want, want to be hurt. Right. I feel like I can't talk to him because if I do, he might lose his temper. I'm not the only one in this house that has anger problems. She does too. She punches walls. She breaks doors. I patched this, but it still has holes like this big. He broke a laptop computer. He's actually gotten in my face. It's like where he's like growling. His face is like bright red. My heart is pounding. I feel like my eyes get red. He wants to hit me and he wants to hurt me. If I were to do one little thing, it could throw him over the edge. I know that I can control myself because I don't do it, but I do want to hit her. He has a blank look in his eyes. It's a rage. He doesn't know what he's doing. I look so like someone else. He says I'm a bitch, that I don't take care of myself. I look messy, that I'm a good mom, but I'm not a good wife, that I'm psycho. It takes a while for me to cool down. I hold grudges. Excuse me. I don't know if you're going to hurt me. And you say you won't, and you say that you would never do it, but you've come close. Well, a recent fight between Orlando and Sarah got physical and had their daughter shrieking and shaking in the I was telling him, I'm tired, I'm sick, Sarah, sorry the if, dishes aren't done. If you, act, if you act like that, there would be no And that's the only tone no you reason. got out of me. He didn't like that I was raising my voice at him. He came over from the kitchen and he grabbed my arms. And that's when she started slapping on my face. And I just remember kicking and hitting and scratching and doing anything to try and get him off of me. I didn't realize that my kid was on right on that corner. And at that point, I just got my kids and I just walked out of the house. Okay, today we're talking about big, big mistakes that you don't even know you're making. Now, we're getting ready to talk to Sarah and Orlando here, but let me tell you, this is not just about them. This is so widespread. I know that because people fight. I mean, they do. I don't know any uh, couple that don't have disagreements, but there's a right way and a wrong way to do it. Mistake number one that you may be making and you don't even know it is destroying your marital bond. Now, you may think you're just arguing. You guys argue, right? That's you right. get upset. Do you have an anger problem? I sure do. Tell me about it. 
Uh, most of the times when we're in an argument, I think I lose control and I feel powerless. I don't feel that I can get across a point that I'm, what I'm trying to say. Is your goal that she understands you or is your goal that she, that she agree with you and comply with you? Is that your, is that your definition uh, of what you want to see happen? Yeah, I do want to get my point. Okay, what's your goal when you guys get in these arguments? My goal is to be heard, for him to understand how I feel and to give the best to our children. Right. Now, you know it's wrong to yell and scream, right? Absolutely. You know that. You know it's wrong to call her names. Yes. You know it's wrong to get physical and go shoving and stomping around the house. Yes. So and what do you suppose it is that you don't know? I don't know how to communicate effectively. I don't know how to get him to understand. So what's the mistake that I think you, that, that I think you're making that you don't know? You don't have any idea? I, I do believe we're not assertive enough. Let me tell you the mistake you're making that you don't even know you're making. There are people that do nothing but research what you guys are doing right now. And I'll put links up on the website. And you know what people have figured out that research this? There are certain things that you can do in the way you fight that predict whether or not you're going to have a divorce with over 90% accuracy. Well, let me tell you, I, I, I wrote down a lot of the categories that these researchers look at across time. You two are in violation of every single one of them. Do you call her names? Yes, I do. You belittle her? But it, it happens. You curse at her? Yes, I do. You attack her character? Emotionally, yes. 90%. You guys are headed for a train wreck divorce. And if you're not going to change what you're doing, if you're not going to change how you're fighting, why you're fighting, how you're fighting, and even what you're fighting about, you might as well shut this down. But that's, we're going to make it work somehow. That's why we're here. Really? We have to. What are you going to change? Well, do you criticize him in, in, in a contemptuous way? Yes. Do you tell him he's useless? What do you mean you guess? Did I you, get, have you been there for six years? I don't want your justification. I want you to acknowledge the behavior. Yes. You say, yes, I, I, I do it when I'm frustrated. I don't care why you do it right now. I just care what you do. Do you lash back at him? when he attacks you. And, and neither of you let the other retreat with dignity, do you? Yeah. At some point, anybody with any backbone whatsoever is going to say, I've had enough of that. I've had enough of that. She's the do most wonderful she's, woman. Do you think she's a, a devoted mother? Absolutely not. I have no doubt about that. Do, do you think that she's attractive? And, and what the hell makes you think she's going to put up with you telling her she's a stupid bitch? <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Because if you don't think there isn't somebody in this world that will scoop her up and treat her with dignity and respect, I got news for you. They're lined up. What you're going to have done is, is, is fractured your family and alienated your wife. And it's the same thing with you. You know, I'd rather be healthy alone than sick with her. I mean, you call him useless. He says you're stubborn. I mean, you, you know how to push. You get mad, you push. Do it to each other. We do it to each other. Okay. Uh, well, let's take a break. When we come back, we're going to find out why Orlando and Sarah need to keep their fights private and stop giving their kids a front row seat. Not only are you sealing the fate of your marriage, you are programming your children to repeat your behavior when they grow up. Do you love her? Absolutely, I do. Will you miss her when she's gone? I always do. Because she is leaving. She doesn't know it yet. But if this continues... Tomorrow on an all-new Dr. Phil. Am I the only one who acts needy while dating? I've been sitting around waiting for you to text me. That's kind of rude. And this is about insecurity. You're looking for a fix. Am I the only one that suffers from baby brain? The knob that's between the rooms, the square thing, the wood... <laughs> I mean, I couldn't come up with the word door. This does pass. It does take a real while for your body to kind of snap back. Plus, Dr. Phil's audience confessional. That's tomorrow. The main problem that we have as a couple is my anger. He has all the tools. He's read about it. He's gone to anger management. But is it really possible to change? 
Well, today we're revealing the top three biggest mistakes that you don't know you're making. Now, what I mean by that is that you are creating permanent damage, lasting damage, and right now we're talking about it with regard to your relationship. Would you do the things you're doing if you knew that by choosing that, you choose divorce with 90% certainty? No. You have such a chip on your shoulder that you come into this already with built up resentment about what she did the last time, right? Yes. And you, you, you can predict what he's gonna do. You've, you've seen it, you know when it's starting. Yeah. And you know, I've always talked about something I call the first four minutes. If you've been apart, and you come together, you've been off for the day or something, you come together, what happens in the first four minutes is gonna determine how the rest of that evening goes. Yep. If you open the door yelling, what's this bill? Why'd you do this? Well, what's wrong with you? How come this isn't done? Blah, 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 blah. That's how it's gonna turn out with 96% accuracy. They end the way they begin. On the other hand, if you say, you know what? Dr. Phil's right, if we've got some problems to discuss, Let's set them aside. Can I help you in some way? Let me tell you about this, tell you about that. Let's that too come together in that way. But y'all don't do that. You begin with a really harsh startup. You've got to de you change who those children are. When they observe this aggressiveness, they become aggressive in their life. They have a distorted view. So not only are you sealing the fate of your marriage, you are programming your children to repeat your behavior when they grow up. You hadn't thought about that. No, I don't want them. <laughs> do you want them to be afraid of you? And we're willing to do anything to, for these children, for us, and as a person, as Sarah, just as a person and me as individual, we need to work in all the, absolutely, I, do. I always do. Because yeah, what I've told you here, she doesn't know it yet, but if this continues, Right now is the calm before the storm, and, and we know that. I, I'm want, look, this situation needs a hero. You have the ability to say, I'm gonna change the goal that I have. My goal is gonna be that I, I want to be understood. I wanna tell you how I feel, and then I'm gonna trust in you that you love me enough that you're gonna try to find a way where we can both get what we want. You don't own her, you don't control her, you can't tell her how to feel. So what you've got to take a, a step of trust, you've got to say, this situation needs, a, you have to do this, and we can have disagreements, but we're going to take them private, we're going to keep them private. We're going to focus on the issue. We're not going to assassinate one another's character. There are just, there, we're going to talk about the eight non-negotiable rules all couples need to follow. If they're going to fight fair, and not determine a bad destiny to their marriage when we come back. We have been separated three times. It's like every two years we have this cycle where we're good for a little while, then we end up separated for, you know, a couple of months. And then we start working harder, and he tries to put the stubbornness behind him, but then it always comes back to the same thing. Things get better for a couple of months, and then things go up to the same loophole again. And here we go again, and we're just going in circles. We can't communicate. We don't know how. Well, today we're talking about the top three biggest mistakes people don't know they're making. Now, get what I said, don't know they're making. Now, Orlando and Sarah don't fight fair. In fact, they've been fighting in such a way that I have said, research tells us that this is doomed. It's just destined to wind up in divorce. If you're doing these things at home, then you need to understand that you are programming yourself for divorce. If you're starting these things harshly on attack, if you show disgust and character assassination and name calling, you forget about the issue and attack the person, you are sealing your fate. I mean, that's a terrible place to go. You, you don't wanna do that. If you use sarcasm and mockery and name calling, all of those things do a damage that has a long-term effect. There's nothing wrong with arguing. People that argue live longer. But there are rules that you need to follow if, if you're going to do this properly. And the first thing I've said is, you've gotta take it private and you gotta keep it private, okay? So the kids are out of this, right? 
Can we make that deal today? Oh, yes. yes. The, the kids are out of this. The if you want to talk about something, you, you just need to decide you're going to go take a walk down the street and let the neighbors hear it, but not the kids. You got to keep it relevant. And, and it's so important that you stay on point here. You've got to decide, all right, what is it we're talking about here? You're talking about, I don't like the way she cleans house, or I don't like the way he helps around the house, or I don't like what, whatever it is. Decide what you're going to talk about and stay on point. You've got to avoid that character assassination of saying you're useless, you're stupid, you're stubborn, you're blah, 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 blah. And you've got to allow your partner to retreat with dignity. There's a point at which you've got to decide my goal here is not to win. My goal here is to advance our understanding. Because if you win, then that means she what? She loses. Yeah. She loses. Now, do you like losing no. at anything? Of course not. So why would you think your, your spouse would? There doesn't, it doesn't have to be win-lose. It can be, look, I want you to understand how I feel about this, what this, this says to me. And maybe it's my culture, maybe it's this, maybe it's whatever. But this is how I feel about this. I want you to know that. And now that you know that, I'm going to trust that we're going to we're, we're going to make changes going forward. So let's go do something else. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm I'm from a different country, I'm, and she's from here. And where are you from? Colombia. Uh -huh. And uh, there's some there's certain stereotypes with uh, how women does their job in their house and how men does different things in the house. So to overcome the stereotype of the tradition that I have. It's not easy. Even though I know, I know I'm marrying an American girl. Yeah, she's very American. <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> and you're in America. And it doesn't mean that you abandon or you disrupt your culture, but you also have to recognize that she has a culture as well. I've had the pleasure of knowing a lot of Colombians, and I don't think you would find any professionals down there that would endorse name calling and and getting aggressive and physical. In fact, there is a tremendous commitment uh, to family respect and, and dignity and unity in Colombia, true? Absolutely. It's a very family-based society. It's not at all what you're doing here. It may be the contrast that bring out the frustration. And, but, you know, sit down and have a discussion about those things inspires understanding but yelling and screaming because she doesn't behave consistent with an expectation you have is A, not a Colombian value, and B, won't work. Now, I, I want to help you guys with this, and what I want to do is I, I want to get a professional involved with y'all to sit down with you and, and make a list of things that you think you disagree about and help you problem solve. You're getting overwhelmed. I, I really want to get you some help with that. I want to give you a wake-up call here. I've never been under the misapprehension that we do eight minutes. Going to keep us posted? Yes. All right, next, we're revealing the number two Madhu with parents, and many moms and dads out there are doing it. I'm going to tell you what it is, and I'm going to tell you what the impact is that you don't know after the break. We have two sets of twins. My husband and I can't seem to discipline our children. Don't raise your hands at me. Come here. What's wrong with you? Listen to me. Go. Stand in the corner. Keep it up. Through the whole building, you can hear them screaming. Across this great country, from coast to coast, you've told me about the crossroads we're facing. That's exactly why I wrote, We've Got Issues, How You Can Stand Strong for America's Soul and Sanity. This book isn't just a conversation starter. It's a roadmap for standing strong in the face of adversity, for embracing our core values when they're needed most. We're talking about real strategies for real people dealing with real issues, from navigating the complexities of today's polarized world to fortifying our families. And I set forth in the book 10 principles that I think are critical for a healthy society. This is not about politics. I'm not a politician, don't want to be a politician, don't know enough about politics to talk about it. But I talk about every angle of life as we know it, from family and relationships to the burning issues that are shaping our world today. We've got issues. How you can stand strong for America's soul and sanity. And you'll find it anywhere books are sold. It's about time we start addressing what truly matters. I 
really want you to pay attention to today's topic because we're talking about the top three biggest mistakes you don't know you're making that may end up having a really adverse effect on you. Doing this show for the last eight years, I've seen so many couples struggle with how to discipline their children. And there is a right and a wrong way to do it. It's, it's really not as hard as you might think if you can get on the same page. Now, Nedra and Nikio have two sets of twins under four. Two sets of twins under four. So I have no problem understanding why they came here. They wanted a break. <laughs> Um, it's, uh, I can, I can totally understand it. Now, Nikio says that Nedra undermines his authority, while Nedra thinks that his punishment... Listen to me. Don't raise your hands at me. I feel like I would I have, have to spank him all day long. <laughs> I have two sets of twins. My husband and I can never agree on disciplining our older son. Come here. Go. Stand in the corner. Keep it up. We have, like, differences in opinion. She mainly yells at him a lot. Hello, I am talking to you. And me, I'm more, of like, physical with him. If I tell him to go stand in the corner, I need him to stand there at attention for at least 10 minutes. I don't want him to be moving around, fidgeting like he's doing right now. Putting him there is because I don't want to hit him. Why are you wet? Did you pee on yourself? You did, didn't you? What did I tell you about peeing on yourself? Huh? What did I say? Do not pee on yourself. I was raised in a home where you do something, you get disciplined. And it's not just like with a whip, it can be with a extension cord, um, radio cord. And I don't want to repeat the same cycle with my children. Whenever I discipline my son, my wife will come and give him a hug and, you know, oh, it's okay. And, then look at me and say, oh, why are you being so mean to him, you know? Both of us tend to undermine each other when it comes to disciplining them. What we're doing is not working. You've had trouble watching. Because I loved him, saw myself spanking her. <laughs> do you think maybe you shouldn't do that? Well, or are you one of those that says, spare the rod, spoil the child? I am sometimes, but I think what the problem is, is I know what it's like to do something and get spanked. So that's all I really know, and I think that I'm passing it on to my kids. Mm -hmm. How about you? you? You think that it's best to spank them when they do wrong? I know it's not best. That's why I'm here, because I know that's what I've been doing. Well, I mean, no, maybe it is. Let me tell you, there's a school of thought out there that says spare the rod, spoil the child. I mean, maybe it's the right thing to do. That's the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. Me too. That's what my mom believed, so that's what I give to my kids. Yeah, so it's just a legacy. Yes. That's what you got, and that's, and how were you spanked? You know, with belts, um, sometimes extension cords, um, switches. Do you think that was wrong? Yeah, I did. <clears throat> but yet you're modeling the behavior, right? Yes, I am. Let me ask you all something. Are, are you all under the impression that your children are hard of hearing? <laughs> <laughs> they act like it at times. <laughs> Are you under the impression that if you say things louder, that their comprehension and retention is enhanced in some way? When I raise my voice, I just want them to know I mean what I'm saying at the moment. I was wondering, because all were kind of one-on-one, -on -one, but you were just really yelling, and th that kind of creates chaos. I, I don't know. I think because I'm from a yeah. valley. Where are you from? St. Vincent. St. Vincent, do they scream a lot down there? <laughs> <laughs> I've got a picture of your little ones right now. They're in the green room. Well, they're just as cute as they can be. I notice your son there has a mohawk going. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that. I've got a reverse mohawk, and it, <laughs> it, it works for me. Um, look, here's the thing. Let, let me just be real clear with you all about what I'm saying about mistakes that you don't know you're making. You, you might know that, oh, I shouldn't have yelled right then, right? When you yell at kids and, and you spank them and you have aggressive behavior with them, uh, do you know that as many as 60% of those kids are going to grow up to be aggressive in their relationships with other people? Not just as parents, in their relationships with other people. If they get hit at home, they just go out and hit other people. Now, that's, and the research is broad on that. It's somewhere between 30 and 60%. But, I mean, you're kind of training them to do that. There's also some pretty impressive research that might shock you and people at home that kids that have been spanked 
as a group have an IQ five points lower at the um, while why my son his speech is kind of delayed it's interesting though isn't it yes and by the way is what you're doing working it seems like he's getting more angry and more rebellious like every day <laughs> it doesn't seem to get better it's getting worse so I don't know what I'm doing wrong it doesn't I mean, work doesn't so work. like if you were trying to push a rock up a hill with a noodle and it didn't work, but you say, well, I don't know what else to do. So <laughs> you'd just still be out there trying to push up a rock up a hill with a noodle? No, I wouldn't do that. I mean, you'd figure something else, right? You yes. want me to give you an alternative? That's what we need. Uh, so glad you said that. We'll be right back. Tomorrow on an all new Dr. Phil. Am I the only one who acts needy while dating? That's kind of rude. Plus, Dr. Phil's audience confessional. Price of poker went up a little bit when you can't see their face. That's tomorrow. Closed captioning provided by... If you would like to purchase a tape or transcripts of your favorite Dr. Phil show, please log on to drphil.com or call 866-4-DR-PHIL. That's 866-437-7445. 866-437-7445. Listen to me, I'm talking to you. It's gonna be a butt next time. Do you feel bad that mommy spanked you? Yeah. You did? You spanked you. Yeah, I spanked you. Get up. <laughs> Okay, today we're revealing the top three biggest mistakes you don't know you're making. I'm not talking about the ones you know, I'm talking about the ones you don't know you're making. It's human to make mistakes, I mean, clearly. But what happens when these mistakes have lasting effects on your family and you don't know you're making them? Now, being on the same page when it comes to disciplining your children uh, is so very important. You've got to be on the same page. Now, Nikio says that his wife, Nedra, is making him look like the bad guy when it comes to disciplining there are two, count them, two sets of twins. Um, and I, that's a busy time, no question about it. The number two mistake is sabotaging your child's future. The chaos that you're creating can lower their eye. At somewhere, you have to break the legacy, right? Right. You guys know that what you're doing isn't working. So in the moment, so you know that's a mistake, right? Because you could say, I, I, I'm down there yelling at her and she's just crying. And when you're, when you're crying, you're not learning, right? And the louder you yell, the louder she cries. And so, and it, it just more rigid she gets, right? How old are the youngest set of twins? One and a half. Okay, one and a half. And, and you know, we've asked you questions, and, and you're actually disciplining the one and a half year olds, right? Mm -hmm. If they're doing something you don't want them to do, and you don't put a one and a half year old in time out or spank them, you just redirect them away from that to something you do want them to do. You catch them doing things right, and you just scoop them up and love them and hug them and do all the things that communicates to them, like, yeah, that was a wonderful thing that I just did. As they get older, as children get older, then they understand currency. There are things that they like to do. They might like to you know, play with a certain toy. And, and at that point, you may say, you know, you play nice here with your, your brother or sister here and uh, for 30 minutes quietly, and then we're going to get all the dolls out. And you can put a timer up and show them. So they begin to say, I earned this doll, and I'm proud of that. And let me be very clear uh, about rewarding these children with a lot of attaboys, a lot of pats on the back. Uh, you, you never, ever let a child believe that your love and approval is conditional on their behavior. That's, that's not what I'm saying. You gotta love them when they're lovable, love them when they're not lovable. They gotta know that no matter what happens, you love them. But you don't have to love their behavior all the time, and that's a separate thing. You gotta turn that volume way, way down. I'm not one for spanking. I don't think it's a good discipline to environment for learning, and it isn't working because you just get tougher and they just get tougher. And then they get rebellious. Because you know, there's kind of a conflict in there. It's like, y'all are supposed to love me, but you're inflicting pain on me. Yeah. 
Yeah. So I, I think what you guys have to do is negotiate between you what the consequences are going to be, what the redirection strategies are going to be, and then you've got to turn down the chaos. These children need to live in a joyous environment, a peaceful environment. And you say, ah, it's easy for you, Dr. Phil. You don't have two sets of twins under four. <laughs> Y'all are probably wondering why I'm not throwing you under the bus here and saying that you're bad parents because you got chaos. I'm not saying that because you're not bad parents. We ask y'all to ask you millions of questions. Let me tell you something about these folks. These are nice, loving, caring parents. I've written a book called, it came out a long time ago, but I'm, I'm gonna give you a copy of that. And I'm gonna mark some pages that I want you to read first. And it, it is very specific parenting behavior strategies. And for you at home, I'm gonna put a lot of that on the website. And if you need further help with that, then I'm gonna get it for you. But we, what we need to do is calm down because what you're doing is creating children that you really don't. Yeah. All right, coming up, find out why my next guest has a lot in common with many of you out there. And we're talking about the three biggest mistakes you don't even know you're making. And she's guilty of number three in a big way. We'll be right back. DrPhil.com, brought to you in part by Travel Consideration, provided by We've been talking about the top three biggest mistakes that you all could be making without even knowing it. And I hate that if, you're, if I'm making a mistake and I don't know it. I don't know what the impact is. So that's what we're trying to talk about today. And if you're doing it, you could be jeopardizing things way down the road. Now, anyone who's been following the news for the past year uh, knows that a lot of smart people made some pretty big mistakes when it comes to handling finances. Our government did it, the companies did it, and some of us did it. My next guest, Liz, is no exception. She is guilty of number three, destroying your financial future. Dr. Phil, I have a lot of decisions to make. My condo... I bought on a whim, so obviously I knew nothing about common fees, taxes. Do I foreclose on my condo that I can't afford to pay since I lost my job? My student loans kick in in June. If I can't pay the bills that I have now, I cannot afford an additional $600 a month. Is my reason for going to grad school just to defer my student loans? This is the entrance to my office. My mom put the sign up here, finest consignments. I have a lot of gorgeous designer clothes that I have here that I list on eBay. When you're selling stuff to make your own living, it's scary. Am I fooling myself and thinking that because I've got this time on my hands that I can even start my own business? School is now tied into the condo, is now tied into the job, is now tied into starting my own business, is now tied into life, and I'm like sitting there like a nervous wreck, like, what do I do? That's the insanity of my life. Thank you. Well, that was Liz, and uh, I brought in reinforcements for you. Okay, sitting right next to you here is Marilyn Logan, known as the money lady, uh, and she's joining us today. You know, I want to congratulate her for being uh, trying to be a homeowner. That's absolutely. However, you you didn't borrow that money for and the so, down payment. That's not the good part of the game. Yeah. You Correct. need to save your own money. So that was kind of like a money mistake. Mm -hmm. And actually, to, you could make that money even if you're working in McLone. <clears throat> Pulling money out of your house is mm -hmm. something that someone does when they have their. Home. So there was no equity really to pull out. So you pull money out of the home, At and that was credit card debts that were at a higher. Um, APR. So okay, it was... let's talk about that for a second, because I want people at home to understand your thought process. Right. You, you, there is a logic to your thought process. You say, right. I can get this loan, and it's a lesser interest rate mm -hmm. than this, so I can take a lower interest rate loan to pay off a higher interest rate loan, and I'm therefore making money. I'm, I'm creating cash flow by reducing interest income. But the huge problems with that are you wind upside down in a really big loan. You owe more than this asset is worth. Right. And in many states, when you take out an equity loan, mm -hmm. your home is no longer protected. It can now be taken away from you. If you default on a small loan, they can take your house, oh, sell it right out. Okay. True? Absolutely. So now that I'm in this situation, do I look at foreclosure as a viable option? Do I keep working with the bank that... I knew I was losing my job early earlier this year, and I contacted the bank right away, as everyone says that I should, 
and I'm not getting any assistance from them. I've offered, I, I thought I came up with what seemed to be um, mutually beneficial you know, options that I would do a, a loan deferment, like my student loans are deferred while I'm in school. I thought that was a good option. Um, do a good faith effort, and they've said no to everything. So well, you're doing I, the right thing to be opening the dialogue. There's no question about right. that. But Marin, go ahead. I want you to first admit that what you did right, borrowing too much money. It's already done. I know, and no one put a, a gun to your head and start all over again. Okay. And do it the right way. But look, wait a minute. What you're saying is that's already done. Already Let's done. not beat a dead horse here. Right. What do I do now? Right. But if you go into the next phase with the same mindset you had in the last phase, you're going to make more. You don't oh, borrow your way out of trouble. Of course. And you're thinking about going back to graduate school. You're fleeing to graduate school because it can affect cash flow, right? One of the reasons I'm considering it at this stage. But you can't afford to not be working right now. I mean, you, right. you, you've got to have a job. You can't afford to be going to graduate school because you've got a debt load. Oh, I'll do school and, and work at the same time. Well, then do two I've jobs. Then do two jobs. Okay. If you can do one job in one school, then do two jobs because you've Sounds got a good. debt load. I mean, that's the reality of where you are. Right. And but we've we've got to fight our way out of this, right? I want you to start all over and do it the right way, and it's okay to start over. Okay. There's nothing wrong with taking a baby step backwards right. to take giant steps forward. Sure. So what I want you to do is to call you to sell your condo at a short sale, which means, for example, if you owe a hundred thousand dollars, you're asking the local they said for no about. To that. $85,000, right. all righty? And the reason why that first lender, you have three loans, I want you to understand the reason why it is because you owe that first lender, the main lender, a low amount of money. You only owe them a little over $100,000. Mm -hmm. And you had the equity in your house, but you took it out. Mm -hmm. And so their attitude is that you've already spent your money. Mm -hmm. So for them, why should they? Because they know that they can sell that condo at a foreclosure and at least get their 104. Mm -hmm. Now those other two, all, all loans, oh, all good. three loans are that's the same lender. Yes. That's even worse than because now. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm saying, I'm saying it's good. You got one it's person a small to convince. Local bank, I but you got I'd one be... person to convince. You don't have to get three people right. in line. You surely right. do. So you got one. You need to let them know they can take the property back and sell it at auction and get less, or and have it abandoned. They don't want that property abandoned right now. And if I were you, what I would do, I would take pictures of everything in there. And I would sell my condo totally furnished. It's there, been I, on the market for six months. I've gotten no there's, offers. There's has, nine. Has it been? And then I want you to, because someone who's living there might have a cousin, a sister, or a brother. You need to be very there's active in selling. There's nine units in my building that are for sale, too, and mine's at, a, at okay, an average but, price. But so. here's, here's what you're saying. Look, and let me be real clear here, because you, you want to be uh, argumentative about this, and, which is fine. I mean, say whatever you want. You're the one that bought it. Right. You're the one that got the second loan. You're the one that got the third loan. You're the one that created this. We're trying to help you. And you can get pissed off about it if you want to. That you've gone at this from a standpoint where you got some no's. That doesn't mean that you quit asking. Right. It means you keep fighting back. And the point is you may have to, to exit this in some way that now you may owe $120,000. When it's all said and done, you may owe thirty dollars and have nothing to show for it. But you've reduced your indebtedness by ninety thousand dollars. I mean, you can you can help yourself here, but you're going to have to be willing to go into a liquidation survival mode. Right. And if they tell you no, and you and if that's right, they just say no, no, no. They do want you to abandon it. They do want to foreclose it. Then that may be the reality of where what she's telling you is: you ask, ask, ask. When they say no, you ask again. And if they finally say, "Get out of that house and give me the keys," then it's not your option. Then you do walk away from it. But right now, you still have some fight left in you. Oh yeah. I was just you, on the phone with the And you can give her some talking points to say to that person. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. You can always stop by DrPhil.com 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There you'll discover more on today's show and learn life strategies. I'd like to thank all of my guests today, including Marilyn Logan, the money lady, and author of the book, I Can't Afford to Marry You. Please send in your questions at drphil.com, and you can also check out my blog at blog.drphil.com, or you can tweet me on Twitter. Uh, thanks for being here. So long.
You can always stop by DrPhil.com 24 hours a day, seven days a week. There you'll discover more on today's show and learn life strategies. You're a podcast listener, and this is a podcast ad. Reach great listeners like yourself with podcast advertising from Lips and Ads. Choose from hundreds of top podcasts offering host endorsements, or run a reproduced ad like this one across thousands of shows to reach your target audience with Lips and Ads. Go to lipsandads.com now. That's L I B S Y N ads.com. I'd like to thank all of my guests today, including Marilyn Logan, the money lady, and author of the book, I Can't Afford to Marry You. Please send in your questions at drphil.com, and you can also check out my blog at blog.drphil.com, or you can tweet me on Twitter. Uh, thanks for being here. So long. <laughs> <laughs>